All right, so here it is in a nutshell. Summa Chin wrote that Lu Bu Wei got a concubine pregnant, gave it to the king of Chen, and the king of Chen didn't know she was pregnant, took her in as a concubine, found out she was pregnant, loved her, loved the boy, made the boy the next king. All right? Summa Chien writes it. That's what happened. The older book, the John Guotza, The Stratagems of the Warring States, it says that the king of Chu is the one who got somebody's pregnant concubine, didn't know she was pregnant, loved her, thought the son was his, and that son became the king of Chu. It's the same story with the names changed. Sima Chin knew the story of the king of Chu. And yet he doesn't go. Isn't it weird that two kings got on the throne in the Warring States period within 10 years of each other, one in Chu and one in Chen? Because the kings got concubines as gifts that were impregnated by somebody else? Sima Chin, the greatest historian of China, does not say, isn't this coincidence amazing? Chin and Chu, pregnant concubines? The historian does not comment on that. He comments on everything that he finds interesting, and he does not comment on that obviously fascinating coincidence. Okay? So, either, and then of course, the other story of the Zhang Guotze, we saw. It just says Lu Bu Wei was the, 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 the Prime Minister of Chen. He, like, he worked in, uh, there's no, no pregnant concubine in that first story. Both of these stories belong to that green book. So the biography of Lu Bu Wei and the green book, Lu Bu Wei is not the father. So Jian knew this book. <laughs> so he had read the Lu Bu Wei biography. Both of these make this story very unlikely. Both of these make Summa Qian's version of Lu Bu Wei's life suspicious, don't they? It's suspicious because he should have pointed out, the, again, to repeat, he should have pointed out what a crazy coincidence. And he should have pointed out, although the Zhang Guozhe does not mention Lu Bu Wei in the biography being the father of the first emperor, there's more to it, and I, I'm going to tell you like the interesting, juicy details. He doesn't. He doesn't mention anything about the coincidence or the weird thing that is not mentioned at all in this one. That makes this seem to be false. But if Summa Chien is lying, now what do we have to explain? His father started this book. His father started this history. And he asked his son to finish it. And his son, Summa Chien, swore that, yes, father, I will finish it. I will make you proud. I will write the best history possible. When Emperor Wu Di got mad at him and said, die or castration, a self-respecting man would have chosen death. Castration was a fate worse than death, literally. Humiliation for the rest of your life. And so Machian took that humiliation, got castrated, so he could keep his promise to his father and write this massive, massive, this is only half of it, it's like this high. It's an amazing history. So he has sacrificed his three preciouses in order to keep his promise to his father to write a history that his father would be proud of, that would make their names live forever. And he's going to lie in it? What does that do to his promise to his father? Well, like a, a lie to his father. Like yeah, yeah, totally dishonorable, right? And so, where do we go? It seems like a lie because of the things that we just talked about. The coincidence that Summa Chien doesn't mention. The fact that in the earlier book, Lu Bu Wei is not mentioned as the father at all. There's no pregnant concubine in this story. So it seems like this is a lie. And yet, it would be very surprising if this man lied. How do you explain it? That's all. That's all I'm asking. There's no right answer. But those are the questions that you need to address.